Erwin. Hello, Nick. So I thought I would demonstrate at the keyboard some of these ideas. We're talking about stride. I also noticed I said there were three things that you could learn to make stride work for you, and then I only explained two of them. So I'll try to demonstrate the third one as well. The first was get yourself a copy of Eric Satie's Geomapadesia. So if you can just pan the camera over here for a second to look at the page. Uh, this is uh, Geomapadesia number two, and you'll see right here there's a stride bass going on in the bass hand here. And the chords are simply an E minor chord, F major, E minor, F major, E minor, F major, E minor, F major going along here. Then later A minor, F, and uh, E flat, etc., etc. So we'll demonstrate this. You'll notice here that this chord position is, I have a little, I don't know if you can see the little red dot I have here, but the little red dot is some kind of voice leading I like to do inside inside of the notes and this second note here from the bottom is the index finger that second note from the bottom is the index finger and this is what happens when you create a chord that uses what I call the pointer system so now pan back a little and we'll show you how this works basically what's happening in this piece is you're reaching down here to strike this note and holding it with a pedal then we come up here and again with the pointer finger I point at the three chord which is the E minor and have this uh, inversion. Now this is a thing called the intervalometer that visualizes these things. If I take a one chord, one, three, five, this is what we call root position and if I invert this by taking the one at the bottom and moving it up here we get this kind of a shape you see where we have a third and then a fourth. And then if I take this third and go for the second inversion and pull it up here, see we have this kind of a shape. So now the one is in the middle where my finger is pointing, the third is my thumb, and the fifth can be either my ring finger or my pinky. I actually like to strike it with both unless... Now what Sauté does is he's using this formation and he's taking this third and he's doubling it at the bottom by stretching with the pinky using the ring finger stretching with the pinky to get this kind of shape which makes the chord see here, very bright, very consonant, very Im immobile but by doing this it kind of makes it softer and more pastel and I'm pointing with my finger to, to that second inversion adding the third on the bottom now sometimes he uses the third on the bottom and sometimes he doesn't don't put the third on the bottom, the chord is hotter and moves. And if we put the third on the bottom, it's softer and more pastel. So this is the very basic theory behind the pointer system. So to get back to Santi, what he's doing is I was saying the first thing to do is to take the melody, which is way up here. And just play the bass notes, so you're going one, easy peasy. And if you do that through the whole song, you can get through the bass, and you can get the melody in, and you can balance, because sometimes people do this. is being overwhelmed by the bassness. If I play the bass a little bit softer and the melody a little bit harder, I can get a balance between them. The other thing that I can do is since it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, I can work on getting that swinging feeling that you get when you're doing a waltz. Oh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it helps get that waltz feeling going. Okay, so that's a day's work, all right?
The next thing is just take the chords now and think of the chords as one, two, three, one, two, three, using the pointer system for the E minor, then doubling the third on the F, pointer, three, five, seven, four, six, one, see the six is the third being doubled, one, three, five, seven would be the three chord, four, six, one would be the four chord, Again, I can then balance the melody against that. Now he reaches way down here. So by doing that, I can go one, two, three, one, and I can get my hand to get those chords, to get those chords going as lusciously and as smoothly as I can. The next thing is to go. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. And again, you'll get that waltz feeling happening and be able to balance these four, three and four note chords against a single one note chord. And he is playing this melody very soft with a slight swell and then going back to soft again. So since the melody is so soft, you really have to pull back on those chords. Another thing to add more to the stride, what I did when I learned to play the piece, and I wanted to take it to another level, so I wanted to add in more notes than Eric Satie has here. So what I did is I played the chord, and then would, on the third and the fifth of the chord, go down a half step. And so I did this. It's a little more French. And now it's getting a little jazzier and you're having some fun with it. So this is a great piece for anyone out there who wants to learn stride piano. And since it's a waltz and the bass note's going one, two, three, one, two, three, everything's happening slow enough. Now they want you to play this thing Lent, Trest, and Lent is very, very, very slow, so it should be more like swelling on the melody there. The slower you play this, even if you play it slower than it should be played, the more difficult the piece is, but the more you have to be concerned with balancing the tone between the three voices. And to me, the trick here besides learning the bass is getting the balance of the tone between the hands. So the melody can be soft and rule and the chords are held in the background so the melody is still forward and no matter how the melody swells and falls that's held in the background with the bass being a little bit louder so you have the chords in the background the bass a little bit louder because it has to last for three beats and then the melody coming to the foreground being played soft swelling and going back and then the second time through a little bit louder And 
putting a nice swell on that and getting this one, two, three, one, two swing gets this going, okay? First thing. Second thing, the pointer method. If I'm pointing at the one chord, I've got a one major chord. If I'm pointing at the two, we have a natural two minor chord. If I'm pointing at the three, we have a natural three minor chord. The four is a major chord. The five is a major chord. The six is naturally a minor chord. The seven, seven, two, four is a diminished chord. And then back to the one chord. So let's just start there. If I reach way down here and hit the one, I can come up here and point at the one and hit that chord. So now everything's right here in front of my belly button, right? Then I'm going to say I'm going to play a two chord, a three chord, a four chord, a five chord. Now if I play them out of order, let's say a one chord, then down to a six chord, a four chord, a one chord, six chord, four chord, five chord, play wherever I want, one chord, six chord, four chord, five chord, one chord, six chord. Now it gets a little muddy down there, so what I, I like to do is not go too far below here, otherwise things get a bit muddy. So keeping everything right here in the middle of my belly button, and I'm Jabba the Hutt here, I'm pretty wide, so this is basically my whole stomach area, this two octaves. So I can reach way down here for a one chord, come all the way up here, go down here for my five chord, come up here, reach down here for a two chord, back to a five chord, six chord, keep it right there, a one chord here, a five chord there, a two chord, and you see what happens is no matter where I reach down here, whatever number I pick, if I pick a five, I'm going to point at a five here, right? five, I point at the five here, so my pinky, and I like to hit both of these, use that like it's one finger, then point, pull a sautee, we double the third, six chord, four chord, five chord, doubling the third, and there I can start adding in my little half steps or whatever I want to do. The idea is when you hit something down here, you want to come right here to the middle, to the middle. Now the other idea I was talking about is what I call crabbing. Here's crabbing. Again, let's just look at the one chord. One, three, five, natural seven. If I take this note here and move it up here, this is the first inversion of that chord. If I take the three here and move it up here, this is the second inversion, and you'll notice in the second inversion again, my index finger points at the root. In the first inversion of the chord, the root's at the bottom. In the second inversion of the chord, the root's on the index finger. So there's this little thing that you can do which I call crabbing. Let's start here with the four chord. And if I want to move to a seven chord, I just take these two fingers and move them down. Now I'm in second inversion and there's my root. Now if I want to spread it out for the three chord, I just go, I just take these fingers and move it down. 
Okay, and now we got the root there. Now I'm going to go for the six chord. Now I'm going to go for the two chord. Root position. Five chord inverted. Second inversion. Root. Four chord. I can do this all day long until it gets so muddy. Start, see, down here it's starting to get muddy. So let's take a look and see if I'm doing chord progressions going through half of the circle of fifths, the pattern is going to be like this. I'm going to go from a four chord to a seven chord, from a seven chord to a three chord, from a three chord to a six chord, from a six to a two, from a two to a five, a five to a one, and then voila, the whole process happens all over again. This is half of the a circle of fifths going backwards. One chord, five chord, the five of the five is two, the, the five of the two is six, the five of the six is three, the five of the three is seven, the five of the seven is four. So what we have here is a circle of fifths da -da -da, backwards. And most chords progressions throughout history, we started with one chord songs, went to five chord songs, two five chord songs, six two five one chord songs, there you got the fifties. Uh, adding the three in, now we're getting into more modern jazz. Adding the seventh and the four, or a four sharp, now we're getting into modern tonal jazz. So that's really just the history of... Now there's one song that does this crab thing. I'm going to take these two notes and move them down. Take the two bottom fingers and move them down. Top two fingers down. Bottom two down. Top two down bottom two down and then take the seventh and move it up to a one and listen very carefully jeepers creepers where'd you get those peepers jeepers creepers where'd you get those eyes don't know nothing you sure have started something can't remember the words anymore. It doesn't matter. I hope you get the idea. So starting from a four chord, I can go through the whole circle. Four, seven, three, six, two, five, one. Four, seven, three, six, two, five, one. Now normally jazz musicians do a two, five, one. Or they like to go two, five, two, five, move up, two, five. They would see this not as a three chord, but as a two, any minor chord's a two chord. Moving to any dominant chord's a five chord. So I can do that. Even on the, domi even on the diminished chord there, it works. So what does that do? That means that if I'm playing a four down here, I can come here. Go down to my seven. Index finger. Spread out on the three. Collapse to the six. Second inversion. Go down to a two. Spread out. Five chord. Four, seven, three, six, two, five, one. That's called crabbing. Crabbing is probably the most important simple mechanical thing that you can learn for just doing simple things like uh, if you want to play something like uh,
favorite pieces. Starts out with a two minor chord, goes to a G7, just crab in, then to a C major seventh, then it goes to a four chord, four major seven, then a diminished chord, to a three major chord, instead of the chord. then to a six chord. Then it goes right here from the 6 to an E flat and half step down to a move the whole hand up to a 3 chord. All right, and you'll see that a lot of jazz tunes. If you use the crab, you can get through a lot of jazz tunes, have conservation of motion, not move all over the place, and you can see how this gives rise to stride. Because I can reach down here, come up here and play my one chord, reach down here for my four, and just crab in for that. Reach down for my seven chord, get my half diminished chord, reach down here for my three, and taking that second inversion, I've got my three chord, etc. So you can go, um, start on the four, seven, three, six, two, five, again. Simplifies, simplifies, simplifies things quite a lot and it's causing what I call conservation of motion so the hand is coming back here and I can play my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven chords without moving more than um, so what I what have I done here? I moved one, two, three, four, I've moved five five keys. I've moved all of about four inches. Okay, here's the third one that I didn't talk about. When we're playing a chord, like a dominant chord, the third and the seventh of that chord create a tritone. We call the root, the root, or the, the, the seed, or the root, and we call the third and the seventh of the chord shells. Seed and its shells. And we take the fifth and we just drop it because the fifth is ringing inside of the root. If I split this up, I can, like that, drop the five. I can produce a, a one dominant chord by doing that. Here's the four. Tritone. So the shells would be six and three flat here. On the five, seven, and four. And again, that's a tritone. That dominant chord has that tri tritone bit built into it, which keeps pushing the ear down five notes. And because of that, you can get this kind of interesting thing. If I play one chord and hit the three and five, seven, now the next chord in the circle of fifths is going to be the F. It turns out if I move the, this down a half a step, to the third of the four chord, and this down a half a step, I wind up on the seventh of that four chord, see? Look at that motion again. I'm moving both of these shells down a half step. Little or no motion there. Now, <coughs> to go from the four to the B flat, from the F to the B flat, B flat, there's my the chord, watch, F, move this a half a step down and this a half a step down, now I've moved it, by moving a half a step, I can play one, go up, play that chord, I'm doing is a 1-4-5 chord progression with dominant chords, believe it or not. Uh, nice trick on the guitar, nice trick on the violin. On the violin, you just 
put this finger here and then here to get that, that four sharp, slide the finger up a half step, slide it back a half step and you're playing one, four, five chord progressions. Here, a one, I want to move to my four, to my, to my uh, five chord, want to move to my four chord. Easy peasy. So if I want to go through the whole circle of fifths, now I'm going to go over here to E flat, go down to A flat, to D flat, down to the G flat or F sharp. Now you'll notice something here on the F sharp. I have 7 flat and 3, same as I had here when I was on the 1 chord. All of a sudden, so a tritone below, I have the same shells. 3 to 7 flat, or E to B flat, would for the C chord, would be the same shells inverted for the F sharp. And the distance between this and this is also a tritone. This is called tritone substitution. So if I'm playing this shells, I can move the root down a tritone, play the same shells, and those would be the same third and seventh, except now, so this being the third and this the seventh, this is the seventh, and that's this is the third F sharp, and that's the seventh. So here, third, seventh, seventh and third of F sharp. That's why the tritone substitution works. So any tritone will allow me to pick the same shells for a root, a tritone below. And what happens is the whole pattern starts over again. And then I go down a, 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 a fifth, up a fourth, down a fifth, up a fourth and down a fifth and I'm right back see where I started now on the C with the seven and the three on top with the whole thing inverted so half step half steps on the shells 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 Doing the inversions of the shells, and then here we are, right back where we started. Okay. Now the reason I mention that is if I reach down here for a one chord and come up here and play those shells, I can reach down here for a four chord and just half half step away. There's my four chord. If I reach down here for the one. The five chord is going to be up. We go up a half step. Five chord, up a half step. One chord. Four chord down. Half step. One chord back up. Five chord up. Back to our normal position. So you see what's happening again is I'm doing a one, four, five chord progression, but the shells are going. And I can go through the whole circle of fifths and not move my hand more than. And here I am right back, and I can invert that and do those over again for the next for the next through the next half cycle. So there's the trick to stride. The trick to stride is first of all, pointer. If I want to lower the third, make it a minor. I want to lower the third lower the fifth, I can double the third, lower these, minor them if I want, I can diminish, so I can get any kind of major, minor, diminished, or augmented version, augment, raise that fifth, and I'm stuck in one place, I, I, we got infinite time limit, Angel. So anyway, I can then do that 
with the pointer system. I can use the crab. It'll keep my hand in one place. Or I can use a happening is then I can hit again a bass note and come up here, hit a bass note and come up here, hit a bass note, hit a bass note, hit a bass note, hit a bass note, and so on and so forth. Okay. So those are the three secrets to stride piano. Rearranging the chords in such a way using either the pointer system, using the crab, or using just the roots and the shells to keep bringing the hand back to the center of the piano. So everyone out there that wants to do stride, I just taught you a secret you won't find anywhere else on the net. And if you get, go to my website at mrnatural.net and click on the button that says go into the school, you, or you see a button at the top that says intervalometer. If you go there, you'll get to see this and print it to your printer, cut it up, paste it together, put it behind and you'll be able to visually see the major scale. And by moving the major scale to any single position, it will automatically move the major scale visually over. You don't have to learn the ABC spellings. You just have to simply follow visually. And I can put the major scale. If, if I put it here, it's E flat. If I put it over here, it's G. If I put it over here, it's D. And the intervalometer lets us move the major scale into any position that we want so I can do this in any key. If I'm going to play a chord, a, a one chord, a two chord, a three chord, a four chord, a five chord, a six chord, a seven, a one. If I move it into a new position, it's still one, three, five, two, four, six, three, five, seven, four, six, one, five, seven, two, six, one, three, seven, two. So the chords will be spelled the same way no matter where I move the intervalometer. The intervalometer becomes a visual cue as to where to find that major scale. Thank you, Nick.